Sorel GoRMD, how to diagnose fractures on a lumbar spine x-ray. So the main point I want to make about this video is that diagnosing fractures means looking for height loss. You have to be very careful and look at each vertebral body and look for any evidence of height loss. If you see height loss, it's not normal. Height loss is never normal. Height loss can mean an acute fracture. So that's the main point I want to get across here. Here's a patient that presented status post-mechanical fall. So what I always do when I'm looking at the vertebral body is that I zoom in, take advantage of the spatial resolution. I'm basically scrutinizing each level looking for height loss. So as I come to the L3 level, I'm noticing loss of height of this vertebral body. I'm looking at L3 and comparing it to the L2 level above and the L4 level below. So there's definitely a symmetry there. There's definitely loss of height. There is depression of the superior end plate. So this finding is suspicious for acute fracture. The next step is to get a CT or MRI to confirm this finding. So now I have a CT of the lumbar spine. I'm in the sagittal plane. I can look at this L3 level. I'm seeing bulging of the anterior and posterior aspect of the vertebral body. So I'm definitely thinking about compression fracture here. As I zoom in and look at this vertebral body, definitely seeing height loss. As I scroll back and forth, I'm seeing these fracture line lucencies extending to the cortex. So there's definitely an acute fracture here. And also as I'm looking at the trabecular bone here, you can see lucency and, and also some sclerosis from compression at that uh, along the fracture plane. So now what? The next thing to think about is, is there retropulsion? Are the fracture fragments extending posteriorly and causing mass effect or impingement on the central canal, causing possible injury to the caudoquina nerve roots? In this case, there is some very mild retropulsion the posterior aspect of this vertebral body without significant central canal compromise. I could confirm this finding on an axial view. Other things to think about is when you see one level that's affected, always look for the second fracture. There's definitely a bit of satisfaction of search. As soon as you see a fracture, you think, boom, that's it. But what you always want to do is look at every other level looking for any other height loss or fracture. As I come up, I'm actually noticing if you look at the L1 level here, there is some mild loss of height of L1, which is more on the anterior aspect. So this is a probable wedge compression deformity. But as I scroll back and forth, I can see that this looks like a chronic thing because there's no acute fracture line lucencies. So that's it. That's how I look for fractures on lumbar spine x-ray. The main point I want to make is make sure you look at each vertebral level looking for any evidence of height loss. Height loss is never normal. Think about acute fracture. If you like this video, Make sure you hit like below or subscribe for additional content. Once again, I'm Sorel Varmd, signing off. Thanks for watching.